What's up, everybody? Welcome to Super Retro, a nostalgic podcast about retro gaming, TV and film, pop culture, music, art, entertainment, anything dope from the 80s or 90s. You know the spiel. (laughs) I'm your host, Tug. That's your host, Will. We got a jam-packed show today. We're stepping our production value up. I'm going to try to put the phone down for a minute and read off of our teleprompter in the back (laughs) it's not a teleprompter it's a it's a it's a dry erase board but you know what god damn it we're trying uh what's up will what's up man you excited to be back this is probably the longest break we've had in a while yeah since we picked up it's is we had some issues we had it scheduled a couple times it got canceled shout out to d hill man i feel bad for that me too i feel bad we we didn't get d hill in before he went back but he was scheduled, he was ready, and, and me and Will just couldn't make it happen. So that's on us, Will. Yeah. Um, hope, I know he comes back in the summer. Yeah, man, he's in the, that's, a, that's our ace in the hole right We'll there. get him back in, and just because of it, I forbid us to talk about any wrestling other than just a quick blurb here yeah, and there. for sure. Because we have a whole wrestling episode planned with him because he is an encyclopedia of wrestling. And, uh, you know, he's he has some real experience with uh, production and playing wrestlers in TV shows, yeah, and et cetera, et cetera. Shout he's out to an Daniel expert. Hill. But, yeah, we got a jam-packed show. Yeah, we got a lot. Bro. I'm ready, man. Let's You know what? Let's hop right into it. So, you know, we like to start our, our podcast off with some super nostalgic shit. And, uh, oh, before we do it, though, let's, let's uh, talk about us. Maybe by the time you hear this, we'll have 25,000 followers on TikTok. Hopefully. Hopefully that's the case. Um, Cross my fingers that we will. So we just want to say a big shout out to everybody on that, man. Uh, Super crazy, man. It means a lot. All the comments you guys really have made us feel appreciated for just being a couple uh dumbasses really just that talking just, talking old school nostalgia couple dudes sitting around talking about stuff from when they were younger yeah. and it makes them happy you guys have made us feel pretty awesome in that you relate to what we're doing so thank you for that we are just getting started so many more episodes to come so much more cool retro nostalgic shit coming your way I mean, thank you thank you thank un- you unstoppable at this point there's unlimited amount of stuff to talk about and tonight is a perfect example we're yeah. talking about a movie tonight that we're not really going to review we're just going to talk about some shit you didn't know from the movie yeah you know what i'm saying which is a lot and then we can go back and talk about the movie yep at another date or even scenes from the movie so it's unlimited guys however we want to start with a good one this one right here, anybody that's even close to our age, and even probably 10 years Yeah, past, it, la- it lasted a while. 10 years younger than us I'd probably have went, some yeah. experience with this. I'd say it went out of the 90s. Anybody in their 30s and 40s know this shit. Yeah. It went out late 90s. That's what I'm talking about. Like, it went way past the, uh, yeah. just two decades. It may have went into 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah. What are we talking about? Saturday morning cartoon, y'all. God. The what's Saturday, more nostalgic than that? There's nothing. I mean, it's almost like synonymous with nostalgia from the '80s. Yeah, it just you know you got to start there, and then you move, then you move on somewhere else. But for real, like all basically, like I was telling you, like uh, like if I think back on my childhood, mm-hmm. like sitting, waking up every Saturday morning at my like grandparents' house, I'd go get my breakfast and get my little TV tray and put it down. You know, I'm talking about the old TV Hell trays. Yeah. The metal, the tin, yeah, the metal. Like tin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Put that down and put my cereal or my whatever breakfast I was having right there in front of the Saturday morning cartoons and just didn't move, bro. That's right. Like uh, every, I mean, it was like clockwork. So many good ones too. Yeah. You want to go? You want to get into some of them? Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one of the first ones that come to mind. Yeah. See, I was even before all that. I was before like, all you that. You know what I mean? I was out there watching He Man, GI Joe, like fucking. Ch- chipmunks snorkels snorkels like bro pink pant like all weird stuff like flintstones was my jam Pit- scooby-doo dennis the menace oh like so many it was it was endless bro like every saturday the jetsons morning, oh, jetsons 100 percent jetson <laughs> uh damn you hit me with the snorkels bro dude i used to love the snorkels me too did the did fraggle rock come on saturday Mm-mm. morning or was that that like- was a tv show like it on oh, that's right. regular day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like on a different different channel yeah. too. Um but like it's, it was almost everything you can think of from your childhood, like uh Thundercats. Yeah, yeah. Mask. Yeah. Like I mean everything. Yep, yep. Uh 
you said uh, He Man. What was it? He Man and what? Uh, G.I. Joe's was oh, my. I mean, that was a staple. He Man and Masters of the Universe. Dude. What about uh, Inspector Gadget? You remember Inspector he Gadget? He was awesome. I used to love that shit. Like, I mean, Chip and Dale. Did oh, you hear Chip? Yeah. Look, Tiny Toons, uh, Animaniac. The, all the, like, uh, Bugs Bunny and stuff. Oh, they had a whole gang of those on there. Voltron, Fat Albert, Super Mario Brothers show. Yep. Y'all remember the Super Mario Brothers show? It came on Saturday mornings. Dude. Like it was, I don't know any kid from our time that didn't watch this, it, telling, and it got so popular that it got so popular that it even spilled over into Sunday. I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah, like yeah. It, it was two days. You know what else I remember? I remember cartoons uh, every day after school. I remember they, they played a few after that. Yeah, in the, like, like after school time, they played like four in a row, yep. four thirty minute ones in a row for like yep. two hours. Hundred yeah. I mean, percent. I might have been like GI Joe. It was GI Joe. It was Dennis the Menace. It was Garfield. Oh, Garfield, bro. Dude, I loved Garfield. And I, th- I don't know if it was a regional thing, but I, a Cartoon Express. I remember that shit. Yeah, like, it, I, I'm pretty sure everybody watched it back mm-hmm. then. Like, I'm pretty sure that went everywhere. Because that Cartoon Express, and it would just have a game. It basically meant you were about to get ran over yeah. with by cartoons. Because, like, it was just one after another. Like, as soon as one cartoon ended, boom, another one started. Hell yeah, And, bro. like, you almost knew that fucking uh, rotation. Yeah, you know the ro- and, and You'd get and- up and be like, oh, shit. What did I miss? And then, and then when you would know going into commercial break, oh yeah, you'd know the sayings, the the sayings, the little videos they would play, the taglines, any of the stuff, just a little video that takes you into the commercial break. You know that it had had something to do with the network or maybe the producers. Yeah, bro. I love that shit. Bro, it was so cool because you get up and like as I'm saying, like you hear like Space Ghost coming on in the next room. You're like, oh shit, I gotta go. I gotta go. So Saturday morning cartoons were the precursor to the Cartoon Network for us. Yeah, that's you know, what it was. Yeah, it 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 was the bridge. It it was the beginning, and, yeah. then, and then we all graduated as adults to the Cartoon Network. And they were like, if it works for them as kids, why not just keep it going? Yeah, what a oh. great idea. Yeah, and we all uh, Should just make the cartoons a little more tailored to them who as do you, adults. Who do you? There's still cartoons today catered to us as adults. That's great. I wonder if the Cartoon Network and all the adult cartoons today spawned and originated with Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. I bet it did. Like it, they, Everyone they, grew up from they Saturday morning. Yeah. It was like, well, they're going to watch this when they're yeah, adults. Yeah, well, they watched it then. Yeah. You know, they, hey, they got a spot for yeah. it. No, they're like, watch this. We're going to make something called South Park. Guarantee <laughs> it. Guarantee that's the origin story yeah, from the They the already adult. like it. Yeah. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's still a thing today. Cool, man. You got anything else no, in that? that's awesome, dude. Saturday morning cartoons. All right, y'all. Who remembers the television station, The Box? All right. Some of y'all might remember. Some of you might not. But <laughs> dig deep. All right. Music television channel called The Box. A lot of people know what this is. What about you, Will? I didn't fuck with it. Will didn't know about it. But listen, I'm telling you. Like, I got my videos for free. You did. But this th- this is what was different about The Box. It was on, like, uh, Channel 99 or some shit. I don't even... It was always on a different channel. I think I do remember it now. It'd be like on channel 99, all right? And you turn it on, and it'd be like a, a screen that had all these songs listed. Each song had an associated number next to it. So what you would do is you would take your phone, you would call the number on the screen, and enter the associated code with the song. And if you wanted to hear, like, Dr. Dre or something, if you wanted to hear some, like underground alternative it started in 1985 and lasted all the way to 2001 so you had all anything in between there but i remember i would watch it when i was like 11 so we're talking like we're talking like 1992 you know snoop Dogg. i mean dr dre the chronic had just dropped you could hear shit like that on there you could hear stuff on the box that you did not hear on mtv videos that were banned uh videos that were just underground and didn't get any love on the radio or on MTV you could you could make them popular by requesting them on the box you would enter that code and then about 20 minutes later here would roll your video all right unless it was a weekend and then it would you know it might be an hour before you see it and you could repeat the same video over and over so if there was something hot, I remember doing this with my friends. If there was like a hot song out at the time, yeah. you knew turning the box on. If you saw that video one time, you were about to see it like 10 times in the hour. Yeah, so Ten. like if I did it and you did it, it would play twice? It would play back to back. Oh, wow. Yeah, it would just play, you know, or, or whatever order they came in at. And um, 
but here's the here's the other thing. It costs money. Yeah, bro. That's why I didn't do it. It costs a dollar ninety nine to three ninety nine, depending on how many songs you selected, and you could select up to three at a time. Bro, ain't no way my mom and dad were letting me call some number and pay a dollar ninety nine to hear music. Yeah, no shit. But dude, I'm telling you, it broke a lot of artists. And it here's broke another. a lot of parents. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but uh, there were uh, 350 videos available at any time. All right. The box had over 170 affiliates, so they also allowed each affiliate to customize their playlist. So you really had a, you know, in New York, you had some completely different shit that was in L.A. Yeah. So what that allowed, it allowed if you if you were a local artist and you were able to get you a video shot, was which was pretty damn difficult in the Back 90s. Then, yeah. In the early 90s. You could get uh, thrown 80s. on your affiliate. And if you could, you know, if you could get that to the to whoever does the programming or if you could get that video into the right hands, you could get your shit on there. And it broke a ton of local artists in their regions. That's cool. Yeah. So it's, it, it, you know, when you think about the box, people that know about it, it's extremely underground. It's extremely gritty. Like I said, you could watch band material on there. Um, here's when it went south. Good things never last. All right. MTV acquired them in 1999, and by 2001, it was over. And, you know, there's still some different variants of it today that the, the mother-sister company still survived and kept doing this. Nah, it's over. It's not the box ended when MTV acquired <laughs> them. The box was over. Once you get so big, you get bought. That's right. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, the box, man. If y'all remember it, let us know. All right, y'all, movies turning 30. How old are we, bro? This is going to shock a lot of people. Movies turning 30. We're going to do more content like this. I God. think this is a good one. And these movies I'm about to hit y'all with, you might not even feel like you were a kid when you watched them. What's crazy is most of these are the movies like that you can remember going to the fucking movie theater. For sure. <laughs> like that, like, You know how old? A lot of That's them. That's old. So I'm going to hit y'all with the first one. Forrest Gump. Man. Tom Hanks. That's fucking Run, Forrest, Run. Classic movie. I love Jenny. Something like that, isn't it? <laughs> is that what he said? Jenny. Jenny. Life is like a box of chocolates. That movie's got a thousand lines. Bro. It's got a, it, yeah, so quotable. Um, Lieutenant Dan. That movie's wild. It's so you know, good. Somebody hates it. Who, who did I listen to that did not like it? I heard oh, that too. The writer of uh, Taylor Sheridan. Yep. Yep, he was not fucking with Forrest Gump. And I was like, he's wrong. I was like, yeah. At one point when I watched it, I was like, that might be the best movie I've ever watched in my life. But I mean, I, I kind of understand what you're saying. But anyway, so Forrest Gump, 30 years old. Another one. The uh, Maybe uh, it's at the top of pretty much every best movie list oh, dude. ever made. I already know what you're talking about. Pulp Fiction yep. turns 30 today. Can you believe God. that? Think about that. Think about that. Pulp Fiction turned 30 I definitely year. went to the movie theaters to watch that. Man, hell yeah. And when I watched it, it was one of the most like different movies I had ever seen. I know. Like at that age of my life. Like most movies all stayed here. Mm -hmm. And when I watched Pulp Fiction, I was like, I've never seen anything like this. It requires a whole episode, and we are going to talk about Pulp Fiction here in a little bit on this on this episode, but it requires its own, like, real breakdown. Deep dive. Deep dive. Uh, the Lion King, I mean, that's up there, too. It's, like, the probably the biggest at that time. I mean, what could be bigger than that back then? I know. Lion King is huge. Turns 30 this year. The Mask. It's huge. Jim Carrey. Huge. True Lies. Awesome. Was that Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis? Hell yeah. Man, that was a good movie right there. Little Rascals. Classic. Another classic. Dumb and Dumber. <sighs> One of the funniest movies ever. Another Jim Carrey film. Bro, that was great. And another one, Ace Ventura. Man, he was killing it. He was on fire in 1994, y'all. Look. He's printing his own money. Three on this list are turning 30 and Jim Carrey was in them. Ace Ventura... Dumb and Dumber and The Mask. All bro. Bro, who had a better nineteen ninety four than Jim Carrey? Dumb and Dumber, man. Nobody. I still think about that movie all the time. It's hilarious. Bro. The shit scene in Dumb and Dumber. I saw I, there was a they were selling a painting of it today. I know. People are putting that in their bathrooms. And that's, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. I well, think it's art. Dude, that's so awesome. <laughs> and the uh the, I always think of the scene where he sells they sell that I think they sell that little blind kid, that dead bird. That they sew back oh, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sitting there like, pretty bird. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I just thought it was quiet. 
Yeah. Oh, fucking God, that's the best thing I've ever heard. So, yeah, man, who had a better 94 than Jim Carrey? Nobody. Dumb and Dumber is, we should break down Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah, that was a classic. 100%. But, yeah, so those are your movies turning 30. I'll run through them real quick. Forrest Gump, The Lion King, Pulp Fiction, The Mask, True Lies, Little Rascals, Ace Ventura. Oh, we didn't say Shawshank Redemption. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Shawshank don't, Redemption. Don't, don't, don't forget Speed, bro. Speed turning 30. Keanu Reeves. That was a good movie. That was when he became, like, real big. I, I fucked with Like, that Point Break, you know what I mean, was a good movie for him. But then Speed, he became, like, bigger. Yeah, he became, like, a real action star. Yeah, like, fuck, it, it basically led to Matrix. You know that what was mean? a good movie. I'd like to watch that again. Speed I probably was, haven't seen that in probably yeah. 25 years. Sandra Bullock. Yeah. I bet it looks so old now. Yeah, I mean, it's probably terrible. Yeah, but hey, movie's Good. turning 30. All right, y'all. The year is 1998. You turn it on MTV. What do you see? Celebrity death match. Bro. The claymation fighting show until the death. It was so, uh, like, outrageous. Oh, it was. Un- like, it was shit that old people back then were, like, wanted to be canceled. For sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, we were watching shit, and they'd be, old people would be like, what is this? Yeah, this is, this shouldn't be on TV. This is ruining children. <laughs> For sure. Like, it was outrageous. <laughs> yeah, it was as graphic as it could get. Definitely. W- which was awesome to the kids that watched it. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. It was like, yes, this is great. You know, my parents don't want anything yeah. to do with this. So this we're is my watching thing. it. I mean, just the most violent graphic Bro. ways to see all the people that were in pop culture at that time like if you were famous at that time or if any, you were even kind of famous yeah like you could get some some love for and sure you're getting put on here and it's gonna be bad you are gonna get fucked up yeah. by somebody somebody's gonna get you some other famous dude that was on a uh yeah you might sitcom. win you might look yeah you never know yeah. mc hammer might beat you up uh, there were 93 episodes of the Celebrity Damn, Death Match. I know. Can you think of the work that went into that shit? I mean, dude. Like how claymation seems like something that I don't even want to even it begin seems to figure out. Seems like it would take a long time. For sure, man. Like, hey, re- hey, sh- big shout out to the claymation makers out but there. How That's some fun. cool shit. I bet it was a fun ass job. Oh my god. Yeah, you know those dudes were like, we're getting paid for this shit. Yeah, this is awesome. But I'm sure it's painstaking. But hey. It looks fun as hell. Yeah. Um, came out in 98, lasted till 2002. Uh, the announcers, remember the announcers? Oh, my God. They would talk. It's so funny how they would describe shit. Yeah. Like, they'd be calm about it, about certain crazy stuff that would mm-hmm. happen. Yeah. I feel like this was the end of MTV. Like, the shows that ushered in after this era oh, yeah. are what brought MTV, are, are what ultimately led to MTV, the end of MTV. Uh, after shows like that's this, a, that's that's honestly we gotta talk about that one day too. What MTV? About the whole, the where it went. Oh, for sure. The downfall, the rise. Because I have a cool theory about that too. What's that? Just about how they they, they didn't die. Like I think MTV died. The music mm-hmm. part of it, how yeah. it used to just be music videos. And yeah. Cool. And then it started doing weird shows. But I think they changed the entire world. Every show now that you're every, every show that my wife watches. Mm-hmm. Is ha- owes in, thanks to MTV, right? Because of the reality stuff. It's all they started it. They started it. No, no I mean, one had ever done anything like real world mm-hmm. when it came on. They were like, "What the fuck is this? Yep. Who are these real people?" And now, every th- I would almost say that TV is half or more than half reality. That you're right. I mean, the, all the shows like yeah. you know, what I mean, it might have died, but I guarantee. I, I know we're. I see a lot of some shows like that where it'll show MTV. Like, they still are doing stuff. Yeah, they might have some kind of... Uh, like, like, we own this mobile. Yeah, y'all like, y'all copying us. Yeah. I, but you know what I mean? Like, so MTV died, but it sort of, like, morphed into mm-hmm. everything. We can do a whole yeah, that's thing a good, on MTV. Because yeah. um, it was a rise and fall. It really was. There was nothing bigger. Nothing even close. Yeah, we'll have to come back to the MTV, because, man, that's going to open up a whole can of worms right there. Yeah. That was some shit. You would, you would pop on Celebrity Deathmatch just to see who was fighting. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, or and honestly, and they would tease it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I yeah. remember waiting, yeah. like knowing that this week, this Friday or They're, whatever. I don't even know what day it came on, <laughs> yeah. which I would be like, oh shit, this guy's yeah. on there. 
And it was in a wrestling ring. Yeah, oh, it was exactly like a wrestling match. And uh, it was UFC, bro. They would tease it. There'd be like, yeah, it was UFC. It was UFC. Yeah, there'd be like, uh, they would like tease like three matches, and you'd and wait you'd be like, through oh all the commercials and shit for that one you wanted to see. Yeah, he'd be like, dude, Michael Jackson's on this week. Yeah, Michael Jackson's fighting Madonna. Yeah, and there were some notable matches. Well, who do y'all remember? I want to yeah. know who you guys dude, remember. Dude, Hillary Clinton, Monica Lewinsky. That's hilarious. I mean, who wouldn't want to watch that? That is hilarious. And you know there were Why'd so many. Why'd they do many... her like that? Oh, and the voiceovers. There was Sylvester some... Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hell yeah. Eminem versus Kid Rock. That's hilarious. They're both from Detroit. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I don't think I watched it at that point. What do you mean? Oh, when like I think I was done. Yeah, like then. yeah, me too. I was uh, I was early on. Yeah, it seemed yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know what? It did seem like it got old fast. Oh yeah, I I, I left. I jumped ship along. Yeah, you know maybe I mean? a year or two after. Yeah, it came I watched out. a few, you know, like four or four or five years at the most, and then I was like, I'm out. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of episodes, dude. Ninety three. I did not know it shit. went that long. Seriously, <laughs> I think as I grew up, I was like, I don't give a fuck about this. Hanson versus the Spice Girls. That's hilarious. That's like, hilarious. I know some people remember some ma- magical fights. It makes me, you know what? Now you know what that means. Now if we see it on VHS or even DVD, I'm getting the whole shit. Damn, I wonder if they do have a VHS. I don't know. It was in that. It was in that ninety eight to two thousand. Two era. That's five cool. years, actually. VHS went way longer than I thought it did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It went into the early 2000s. Have you seen... Sure. Uh, man, this is off tangent, too, but who cares? Like, you know, have you seen, like, there's companies that make modern-day VHS? They they convert it to VHS. Yeah, and, I saw and a do Mutant the cover. Mayhem, yep. awesome neon green. I was like, I oh, too. my God, why don't I, why do I want this? Yeah, I want all that I, shit, too. I have it. I but, have it. I bought it already. But here's the thing where I, where I, where I don't pull the trigger as far as buying it. Or 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 wanting to collect it because it's not it's not authentic. No, it's not like it's not real. But supposed... it's like based I, off I of that era. I know. I get it. I I almost the want. fact that that someone out there takes their time to be like, I want this to be an obsolete mm-hmm. form of media. Yeah. yeah. Who the fuck wants a VHS? Yeah. You know what me. I mean? <laughs> Other than us, <laughs> me. like our people. Uh, um, and also, like when I see people making the the shells for like Nintendo sixty four, yep. like custom shells, I want them. But then I'm like, eh. you know, remember that that uh, convention we went to? There was a bunch that yeah. selling new c- cartridges. Yeah, and we were yeah. like, oh, this ain't fucking what we want. No, this ain't it. This ain't it. Yeah, uh, yeah. The 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 home brews is what they call. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. We were like, nah. They were making home brew games. We're, we're still trying to get the regular collection, bro. But yeah, celebrity death match. <laughs> Classic, dude. Who 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 do you guys remember? What what fight do you remember? What do you remember about it? I remember the announcers were wild. I remember the voiceovers yeah. were wild. I know some people remember some uh, some details about how people got took down. I think yeah, I think some people got uh, uh, butt hurt over it too. Some of the celebrities that um, oh, were being impersonated, they got all bent out of shape. You about got it. made fun of. Yeah, like bro, you are in the public domain. Publicly, we are going to just destroy you. Yeah. And any scandal or anything they were having or anything yeah, related to them at the time, they would just bring it up. Yeah. Like everything. Nothing is off limits no. on Celebrity Deathmatch. That was classic, dude. Conker's Bad Fur Day on the Nintendo 64. <laughs> Wild ass, graphic, vulgar. Controversial. Dis- controversial, disgusting, <laughs> awesome, binge drinking, squirrel type of a game right here yeah who this remembers is, that who remembers conquer's bad fur day this is some wild shit and here's the thing a lot of people might not yeah i was gonna say when did it come out march 5th 2001 during the end of nintendo 64's life cycle um and there was very limited marketing behind it so that's that's another reason why why it didn't do well it, it however it was critically acclaimed rare made this game Dude, rare still around rare is still killing it and they parodied their own games with this game and it ended up being fucking awesome that's crazy that rare did that man rare did this game and it's rated m uh nintendo actually is not a fan of this game uh how it got how it made it all the way through the process and put out, I, I don't really know. Uh, there's like it wouldn't make it today. There is a sunflower with these big boobs that he has to like bounce off of. Bro, yeah. uh, there is uh, 
there, there's some wild shit that happens in here. Uh, it, but basically, it's about a binge drinking squirrel that uh, had a long night at the bar, got hammered, and has been trying to make his way home to his girlfriend. That's literally the plot of the game. He's just trying to get home to his girl. He just had a bad fur day. And, and his journey home is everything that he experiences. Yeah. Uh, that's the game. That's the game. It's like an adult version of Banjo Kazooie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is another rare game. There's tobacco. <laughs> they smoke cigarettes in this game. The ad campaign was targeted at male college students. And what's funny is a bunch of 2001 Karens got all butthurt about it because the artwork and, and just the gameplay, if you were to see it in passing or just see the artwork, it looked like, you know, any of these other rare games or any of these other games on the Nintendo 64 because it was super, you know, friendly yeah. for kids. A lot of the games were on the I'm Nintendo 64. I'm sure some 64. kids picked it up and was like, what? That's exactly what happened. There, um, a bunch of 2001 Karens got tricked into buying this game from their kids because, you know, they trusted Nintendo. Yeah. And can't be bad. Exactly. And there's an M on it, lady. Yeah. See the M for mature. LA Times reported that some parents were horrified. And here's an example. They reported that a mother in Indiana <laughs> said, and I quote, it's disgusting, sophomoric, and I'm disappointed in Nintendo. It would be like if Disney released a porn. I mean. What? But, I mean, I, I get the analogy that she's trying to make. That's hilarious. It's fucking. They had them up in arms. It was wild, dude. There is a scene. There, I mean, there is a level. It's, it's literally the shit level. The poo level. You travel through this whole level, and it's nothing but shit the whole time. You're jumping <laughs> over turds. There's shit on the wall. It's splattering everywhere. Which, as a kid. It's awesome. And when you get to the end of that level, the shit level, you have to fight a giant piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. It's an opera singing piece of shit. Yeah. It sings an epic, amazing opera song about shit. And uh, his name is The Great Mighty Pooh. Yeah, yeah. So you <laughs> you beat this shit level, and you have to you encounter the great Mighty Pooh, who sings a Dude. opera song about shit. And Duke can actually sing too. the The voiceover work in this game. Oh, it's class. That that they really did good about that. Yeah, that's one of the the that's one of the most notable things about the game, is the voice work. Yeah, I mean, just I can't remember one before this that I've played when I think back to the voice work. I mean, I guess there was probably some stuff on um, PlayStation one that got pretty in depth, but I mean, they treated this thing like a movie. Yeah. They treated, they really did. They treated the voice work on this like a movie and it stands out. Basically, if you have bad audio, then you have a bad product with pretty much anything, movies, podcasts, games. If you have good audio, it can make or break it. Yeah. And if you have great audio, it, it can really make it. Yeah, it can pick up for some bad parts of another. That's right. But I mean, hey, like, and that game's still pretty crazy today. Like, and it's like I was, it's more expensive today than it was when it came out. That's right. Roughly around $110 on all of the, uh, which you is know, crazy for, for a car, just for the cartridge. Yeah. Just for that little cartridge right there. 110, around $110. That's awesome. Nintendo Power. Oh, yeah, dude. Nintendo Power refused to print anything about it. That's how much Nintendo didn't like this game. It was not fucking with it. Uh, some official Nintendo strategy guides did list it, but if the name appeared on the cover or if this was on the cover, they would black it out with a piece of plastic, you know, like a Playboy that was in a gr grocery store. Because or they probably knew Nintendo Power was mainly for kids, younger right, kids. Right. KB Toys pulled it, didn't sell it. They're like, hell no, nah, we're not selling that crap. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? I didn't fuck with KB anyway. Toys R Us was where it's at. So whatever. It developed a cult following. This deserves a cult following. Yeah, it's it's like still, like, I remember when we started recollecting stuff, people, that was... This is always talked about. It's always. Yeah, this In is the one the gaming of, community. Yep. It's still like a, a legendary game. We need to try to beat it. So it's a parody of their of Rare games made by Rare, but also in the game, there's a bunch of parodies. There's yeah. like a Matrix level. There's a Save It Private Ryan level. That's fucking hilarious. Dude, it's, it's so cool. They do a bunch of shit like that. So, I mean, they put some real work into this game. Like amazing work. They were already dope at what they were doing and they put it into into here. They had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah. They had a lot a, of fun with this. That's a cool game, man. There it is, y'all. Who remembers that game? Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Let us know, y'all.
stuff you may or may not know about Pulp Fiction. In honor of it turning 30, we wanted to talk about a few things that you might not know. And I, I didn't know a lot of these. I mean, there's so many movies that we don't know little shit about. Yeah, I watched a video or something. There's like over 200 things that you probably didn't know going on in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. But I mean, what a complex movie. Though. It is. I mean, it's, like I said, every movie has those. They really do. And, you know, this movie is always on the number. It's always number one, number three, number two on, on the best movies ever made. I don't know. I don't know. Is it my favorite movie ever made? Probably. You know, it's definitely up, it's up there. there. I, I'd be. It'd be hard for me to find another one. Yeah. When I when I watched it in the movie theaters, it was like a groundbreaking experience. Yeah. And there's there is something in 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 our stuff you may or may not know that blew me away when I read this. I was like, oh my god, why didn't I figure that out? So now I'm gonna go back and watch the movie and yeah. just and just try to like piece things that. together that's yeah. a, that's what's cool about this movie is how many how rewatchable it is it's very dude every time Cause you're like oh shit i didn't even catch that like you might watch that movie mm -hmm. and miss some and the second time you watch it you're like oh yeah like little, little nuggets will pop yeah. in your head because you're not focused on this or you're looking that way yeah and especially since it's not filmed in the right order or it's not they, it's not shown to you in the right order. Yeah, that's what was... It wasn't even legal to Like, do. the first time I watched it, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? You're like, this isn't legal. This breaks every rule. Yeah, you and can I not it. do this. I know, I know. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, so how is he still here? Yeah. Um. All right, let's get right into the stuff you may or may not know about the movie Pulp mm. Fiction, all right? Don't be in the comments getting all disgruntled because you knew it because I didn't. Vincent Vega's 1964... Chevelle Malibu convertible was stolen during the production of Pulp Fiction. That's crazy. I think I heard this, but I, I definitely don't. didn't. Stolen during production. And here's the crazy part. It belonged to Quentin Tarantino. Holy shit. This was Quentin Tarantino's ride. I'm not really sure what they did after it or if they got all the shots. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not really sure what happened. I know it was stolen during the production, and that is wild. Damn. You know, the red one when uh, he comes blazing around the corner and runs up in old boy's yard because she's ODing in the car yeah. or whatever. That Malibu, it was recovered. This car was recovered in 2013. A cop pulled up on some kids that were, like, taking parts off of the car. And he was like, what the hell y'all doing, you know? ran the VIN number, and it came back stolen, but to a different person. But a little further investigation, they were able to see that the VIN number was tampered with and that when they ran the real VIN number, it came back to Quentin Tarantino. And he got it back. And he got it back. That's awesome, dude. And has it today. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'd heard something like that vaguely, but like I said, I don't know. Hey, I learned something. Man. I didn't know that he got it back. I didn't know any of that shit. I didn't know the cops saw the kids stealing it. Uh, the bad motherfucker wallet that Samuel L. Jackson has when he's like, it's the one, it's in the yeah. bag. It's the which, one. Which which one is it? It's the one that says "bad motherfucker." That's uh, so cool, dude. Well, the most quotable movie of all time for me. But we'll get into that. That was actually Quentin Tarantino's wallet, and he gave it to. Samuel. See, I could see that being Samuel L.'s wallet. Right. That's probably why Quentin Tarantino gave it to him. He's, he's like, like, you know what? You should have it. Uh you're the bad motherfucker. Yeah, not me. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I love that. So, you Me know, too, they, they wrote that shit on the fly, too. You know, it's the one that says bad motherfucker. That's cool, man. He, like, basically is uh, incorporating his real life into everything he films. The adrenaline shot oh. in old girl's it's chest. So fucking... Ugh. Oh, the sound. My Just God, the sound man. it makes. It's like... Oh. That was... Ugh. Yeah. That was filmed in reverse. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and watch it now, knowing that it was filmed in reverse, because I can't... I can't picture. So they it. started with the. They started with it in her and then pulled it out. So, but it's pretty brilliant because yeah. it works. I can't tell. The way it looked like he stabbed her with it. It really did. Yeah, and that sound is oh, it's awful. Steve Buscemi is in Pulp Fiction too. Did you know that? I think I, I remember it. He is the waiter at Jack Rabbit Slim's. He's the one talking to Vincent and Mia about the five dollar shakes. Yeah, which crazy now. It's not even that expensive sounding. Oh, I know, I know, <laughs> I know for sure. But you know, I, I back then you were like what. Yeah, five dollar shakes. You're like, yeah, who's paying five dollar for a shake now? Shit, that's normal. That's pretty normal. I could definitely see you paying five yeah. easily, but how cool is that? They just throw Steve Buscemi in there, right? And he does it. Yeah. And he's like, hell yeah, I'm in them. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll be the waiter. He's yeah. only in it for like thirty seconds. I've watched this movie over a hundred times. I guarantee it, easily over a hundred times. Yeah, never once 
realize that was Steve Buscemi as the waiter. Oh, I did. But the second you hear him talk after you know it's him, 100% him. Yeah. I'm probably going to get roasted for that, but I had no idea. Hey, man. Kathy Griffin's in it, too. Hmm. I don't know if I remember that. It's when uh, another part we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, it's when uh, Butch runs over Marcellus Wallace after she's him come across the street and she's one of the pedestrians and she go, uh, Marcellus Wallace wakes up and asks what happened. She goes, you were walking across the street and you got hit by that guy with the car. That's Kathy Griffin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I knew that though. When I went back and watched that, you know, 10 years ago, I, I recognized her. Yeah. I was like, there's Kathy Griffin, but I didn't that's know. That's a the fucking first awesome scene. Cause he's looking for him anyway. And he pulls, wait, yeah, here we go. So to segue into this part. So when Butch goes back to his apartment, Bruce Willis's character. When he goes back to his apartment to get his father's watch that his girl forgot. When he walks in, if you remember, there's a gun laying on his uh, kitchen counter. And he looks down he looks down at him and like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And then that's when Vincent Vega comes out of the bathroom and he does what he does. He wipes it down and he leaves. So you automatically think that was Vincent, that was Vincent Vega's gun. No, it wasn't. Hmm. No, it wasn't. Guess whose it was? Who? So when he leaves the apartment, what happens? Who, when Bruce Willis? Yeah, when Butch leaves the apartment after... Oh, that's when he sees Marcellus. That's when he sees Marcellus Wallace. Because Marcellus Wallace was just with Vincent Vega in the apartment, but set his gun down to go get coffee and donuts and was on his way back to Butch's apartment. That's awesome. Yeah. So he now he's got a dead body on Marcellus's gun. That's right. I never put that together. No, I, I every I think I would assume everyone watching this would think that it's Vincent's gun. Right, but I'll go a step further than that. I didn't assume. I, I never put together that. Few seconds later, he sees he sees Marcellus Wallace, and there was nothing outrageous about that to me. No, 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 no. I thought it was a coincidence. Me too. Yeah. No, they were together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it now. They were literally yeah. together. That's why he was walking back yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was on his way back there, and that's why he saw him. And he looks up and he's like, literally around the corner. I'm hitting this dude. Yeah, he's like, shit's going down. Yeah, that's that, awesome. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's awesome. That makes me want to rewatch it with that stuff in mind because I never put together. I mean, I never put it together that they were together. But if you think about it, they 100 percent were together. Yeah, that's who he works for. That's who he works for, and. He literally left his apartment and sees him one second later. Yeah. Like he was on his way back. Like he was just randomly next door. Yeah. Yeah. So somewhere doing something else. That's that's dope to me. Yeah, it is. Um you, everyone heard the rumors back in the day. What was in the briefcase? Well, the rumors always have been that it's Marcellus Wallace's soul that he sold. And what fueled those rumors is because somewhere it's printed that when you sell your soul, they remove it out of the back of your neck. And he I had don't that Band-Aid there. And he had a Band-Aid there, which he organically really cut himself when he was shaving his, because he's bald in the movie. He was shaving his head, and he was shaving back on his neck, and he cut his neck and put a Band-Aid on there. Originally, that scene was supposed to open with you seeing Marcellus Wallace, but instead hmm. Quentin Tarantino decided to focus on that because he thought it made the character more authentic. Bro, I, 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 that's one thing I heard. Like, that was one of the biggest, like, takeaways from the movie. Right. Like, unheard. Right. Like, untold. That it was, uh, that's he sold his soul. soul. Yeah, because when he looks in it and sees all that gold. Yeah. And you're like, that's not gold. And, and apparently, somewhere, I used to hear, somewhere it's printed, or they say that your soul is the most beautiful thing. Which is why Vincent Vega, when he was looking at it, was just, like, in complete shock. Yeah. And here's another one. Um, Samuel Jackson uh, and that scene where Samuel Jackson and Vincent Vega go into the apartment to retrieve the suitcase. Uh, he asked him, he asked him, do you know why they call it a Royale with cheese? Yeah. And he goes, and he goes, uh, I, 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 I don't know, because of the metric system. He goes, look at the big brain no on Brad. Brad. You a smart motherfucker. You know, bro, that's it? so his, funny. His name's Brett. Yeah. His name's Brett, but the take was so dope. Quentin Tarantino was like, we're keeping it. Look at the big brains on Brad. Yeah. You a smart motherfucker. You know that? His name's Brett. That's fucking hilarious. He goes, Brett, why don't you tell my man here where you got the shit hit at? 
yeah. you know, he says his name a couple times in it. Uh, That's funny. But he on that That's take money, dude. Yeah, you got to keep. You that. can't say let look at the big brains you got on to keep Brett. It. Yeah, you can't be like, no, nope, you gotta start that. That's over. a nope. quote has been said years after. I say that shit all the time. Yeah, but uh, Royale with cheese. Thing. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, <laughs> motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time? Yeah, that little quote he says to people before he kills them. Oh God! Damn. I tattooed that shit on me. I know. I, I tattooed Ezekiel twenty five seventeen. Yeah, on my stomach. You ain't the y'all. only one, bro. On my stomach. For you know how many people out there have done shit like that for movies like this? I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's how much I like this fucking movie. Yeah. Um, it had an eighteen point five million dollar budget. Ten million dollar budget for marketing, and the motherfucking movie made two hundred fifteen million dollars. Damn, that's a massive success. Yeah, that 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 put Quentin on a different plane. It really did, man. It really did. You know, I heard Quentin Tarantino talking about he didn't want to make any movies like the movies in the eighties, and I've always taken that personally. But I feel like if he wouldn't have had that mind state, no fucking way, no fucking way. Pulp Fiction would have been made. No, I mean, it was such a classic. It was perfectly timed. You know what I mean? Right. And the and the cast, you couldn't get a better cast than that. Here, I got one more. I heard something on, I don't know what it was on. I heard that, what? About Bruce Willis? No. Well, uh, he, Quentin Tarantino was at a party, and just Bruce Willis happened to live down, two houses down, mm-hmm. and he was at that party, and he was like, dude, I loved Reservoir Dogs. Damn. And he was like, no, really? He's like, that's cool. He's like, you're in it. He said at the time, Bruce Willis is the biggest Hollywood star in the world. Oh, yeah. And he was like, uh, and he was like, dude, I want to be in your next movie. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, he didn't even know he, he had, Bruce Willis has already read the script. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I want to be Vincent. Oh, and he damn. was like, fuck, I, heard I have John Travolta. Yeah. And then he was like, okay, uh, I want to be Jules. And he's oh. like, F- he's black. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I already have Samuel L., and then he took the script home. He said, "Read it again." And he put he said, "Like put yourself as Butch." Yeah. And he called him back, and he was like, "I'm in." Hell yeah. Yeah, and that's how he got uh, Bruce Willis to play uh, Butch. No one else could play Butch. I uh, know. I mean, it was per- it was the perfect role. It really was. And you know, Quentin Tarantino went to bat for John Travolta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. not a, a good point in his life. Nah, he he was no longer a a big deal. Yeah, yeah, like his his box his box office draw days were over. At yeah, that point. and that's what I'm saying. And like Bruce Willis was as yeah. high as you could get. Yeah. So man, hey, I respect that. He had a vision, man. He fought for it, and uh, I think there were some people like the studio trying not to give him the money. Yeah. You know, Harvey Weinstein. Or yeah, whatever. Well, uh, that's what they said with Bruce Willis. It helped. He was the. Yeah. It made it be like okay. Yeah. We'll fuck with that. Yeah. Like perfect cast, bro. P- unbelievable cast. Like, where you got Steve Buscemi as a one-off and it's it, a fucking waiter, bro? Yeah, yeah. Come on. D- there's so many things I love about this movie, but uh, I think I want to save them for uh, a, a full video yeah, just about it. So, yeah, those are some things you may or may not know about Pulp Fiction. See, if you know any, there's probably some that you can tell us that we don't know. There's so many. For real. Hey, let us hear them. Yeah. Who remembers this fucked up movie, Requiem for a Dream? Whew traumatizing like, you know one thing that i wasn't even thinking about talking about was dude the way this thing was shot it's incredible. uncomfortable it's uncomfortable this yeah. movie is uncomfortable like the cinematography though and like the close-ups of like the veins and, oh, the, yeah. and, it, the, and the like the, the eyes dilating and shit oh it gives it makes you feel all weird like the, shit. Way, the way they show or portray like uh abuse like dr- drug abuse like, it'll really get you. I mean, if you know, if anyone out there knows a drug addict or has gone through it themselves. I mean, pretty sure everybody pretty has much somebody everyone. in your family. Like, even, like, they cover the whole gambit. Like, they, they hit you with the pills. They hit you with the heroin. They hit you with, like, it's a smorgasbord of yes. problems. How? This movie haunts me. The, the It really does. What that mother went through. Bro, she's, I mean, that's the scariest part of the movie. Uh, oh, my God. Going, her being a, her, you know. And like, uh, it's a, what I tell you, like, it's a, it shows you how, uh, what loneliness can do to people. Oh my God. Like, cause if you think about it, almost every character in this movie is lonely. Absolutely. In some way. Yeah. And how, and you feel so sorry for the lady because she is so lonely and all she wants to do is see her son. Yeah. 
She just wants to be around him. Like it, he, it makes you feel bad for everybody. Like you feel it in your your chest watching this movie. It's, like the, these movies, man. You know that I'm not going back and watching that movie. You know what I'm saying? No. And it's not because it's not good. I, I watched know you it did. recently. And it's not because it's not good. It's just because I don't want to put myself through that. No, I, and we're in a <laughs> like we're in a better place in life. <laughs> no shit. I don't want to go back. Oh my god! Don't bring me down right like, now. And, and the characters like Jennifer Connelly and uh, Marlon Wayans and Jared Leto, they do yeah. awesome. And the and the mom, what's her name? Ellen Burn. I can't pronounce Ellen her. Ellen Burstein. Yeah, I can't pronounce Bro, it. She killed that role. Unbelievable. Like, oh. unbelievable the way she captured that. I mean, getting on the speed and thinking she was going to go on, on the game the, show. On the game show. And she, like, that's all she thought about. Bro, she, like, obsessed, obsessed over it. Obsessed. And, and did, about eating. She had, um, like, an eating disorder. And lost weight. Yeah. Just so she could go on there she and was look on these her diet best. Pills. And she went absolutely insane she, at the end of it she's like i mean spoiler alert she's like getting like electro shock therapy and shit that scene is 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 terrifying terrifying that scene where she is in the she's being wheeled on the stretcher bro and she's like being restrained and then they they shock her they do the electro shock on her and you just see her just go like so, so sad. You see life leave her body pretty and much. And that reminds me of like she reminded me of like my grandma. I know, dude. That that's like, exactly what it was for me. Even the little nightgowns yeah, and shit. And she, she didn't wear. even know she was taking drugs. I know that dude. Like, I'm she felt you. like oh, I'm, this is fine. The doctors gave it to me. Right. She thought it was totally yeah. cool. And like, like even and your boy Jared Leto ends up fucking. Getting what is he get? I think it's infection, and his arm gets fucking amputated. Mm -hmm. He's sitting. Oh my god! And then your boy ends up in jail. Yep. And she, and, oh, it's just so bad for all of them. And like I said, like it, they all had hopes and dreams mm -hmm. of doing certain things. Yeah. And ends it ends terribly for everybody involved. Yeah, man. Like this is not a good ending. <laughs> man, just just that what that old lady went through. Still fucks with me today. Yeah. When I see this, when I see this cover or just hear somebody talk about it, or I'll just be randomly sitting there and I'll, <sighs> I'll, I'll remember her being electroshocked and, and just the way it was filmed was so, uh, I, I don't even know. It was just. The, it makes you, they capture like disorientation, like in, in, in the uncomfortable feelings. Yeah. It was so dark. It was dark. The bro. way it was filmed. It was dark. just dark film like i don't know anyone who watches this and uh, can be in a good mood for any amount of time after no shit and like, you know one of the most iconic movie quotes of all time came from this movie what ash to ash yeah you know what I'm talking oh, yeah, about? yeah 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 <laughs> i say that shit all the time god what a crazy movie all right new segment super retro news of the week we're going to talk about what's going on in the world of retro anything that's retro that has hit the news cycle has some kind of connection 13 year old willis gibson out of oklahoma has officially beaten tetris believe it or not tetris is beatable who knew Bro, i didn't even know had no idea when that happened i was like hold up yeah it's not nobody beat it yeah that's what i was thinking I was like wait I like don't... that's how much i didn't fuck with tetris like once i started playing tetris i was like yeah i'm not this isn't me yeah it was fun for a minute yeah but that was about it i was like uh, I, i'm i don't think this was made for me but you know i definitely don't as soon as i heard a, a 13 year old beat it i was like i don't what does that mean yeah so here's what it means uh apparently after you Max out the score, which is like, I think, nine ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine something like that. There's a kill screen. Yeah. you Only computers have made it this far up until now. Yeah. Only computers have maxed out the score. And then a after you play so long, after you max out the score, it freezes. And that is what people are referring to as beating Tetris. Yeah. Um, and it freezes at the same spot every time. This kid... He got to the point. He was. A, he's a competitor. He's a competitive Tetris player, yeah. though. As if, hey, if you didn't know those those were a thing, you do now. There's there a competitive are, everything. There's player. a competitive Tetris uh, community community out there. All yeah. right. Uh, and th this is their god, Willis Gibson. Well, I mean, dude, I, I and like I told you, I said uh, there's a bunch of people like so. So you know, when somebody does something like this, there's 
there's a, immediately a hundred people saying that he's a cheater. Yeah, he it, cheated. This wasn't on a real system, like mm. uh, and the like the gambit of what and like I've seen him compete and he never got that far. Yeah, I'm like hey, he fucking did now. Yeah, he did, and you know and what? that's what other people was commenting right after that. They were like, well, then you do what he did on a a exactly. non regular system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know what? You know there was some poor bastard out there that did beat this game that didn't even realize that he beat the game. Yeah, and he thought, oh well, it froze on me. Yeah. But apparently, after you get a certain level, like level 29 or something, the blocks start falling so fast, fast bro. that you can't. I mean, you have to, every move you make has to be perfect. If you make one mistake, then you can't. You bro, can't go I'm, any I, yeah, I'm so dumb that like it got to a point where it wasn't even that fast that I couldn't handle oh, it. Oh, dude, you know yeah, what I mean? No way. <laughs> it got slow, and I was like, no okay, I, 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 his father did pass yeah. away like a couple weeks before this happened, so I'm sure old boy was just in there locked in, yeah, like bro. going through some shit. Yep. So you know what? Yeah, I give the dude props. Hell yeah, good job, Willis. Keep keep playing. Uh, it's awesome, by the way, that a 13 year old is playing a game that is old. playing a retro game that was like released in like you yeah, know that's cool, dude. 30 years ago. Yeah. So shout every, out to Willis. Every Gibson. game should be beat. 